that is a packed room. Wow, look at all the people. Now, I'm getting a little nervous. You'll be fine, Estelle. This is what all the rehearsals were for. Besides, once we start up, you'll forget they're even there. You're the type who can only focus on one thing at a time anyway. Just one thing at a time, eh? Well, I guess I'll just focus on the boy in the dress then. That'll be easy. Ahem! This year's Campus Festival is already a big success! Though we may have... Though we have many esteemed individuals here, such as the Duke and the Mayor. And the other Mayor. Uh, but not the, a third Mayor. Only two. We, are, we have a two Mayor limit. Uh, we can't afford to be intimidated. So just remember our number one rule and you'll be fine. If you're gonna puke, do it off stage! We've done a good job of keeping the festival lively so far. Now let's close it out with a real bang! Without further ado, the Student Council proudly presents Marjorie of the White Magnolia. Please enjoy the show. In the year 1100 of the Septian calendar, 100 years ago, Liberal was still a land of nobles and aristocrats. But commoners too held some power even then, and they were prestigious traders that grew more influ influential with each passing year. During this period, there was much friction between the classes, and the nobles and commoners clashed often. As time went on, these clashes intensified. The intercession of the royal family and the church failed to end their squabbling. The stage was set for a final conflict. A year had passed since illness had stole the king from his people. Our tale begins on an early spring evening in the rooftop garden of Bransel Castle. The street lights shine on everyone, each bright with their own happiness. And in spite of that, ah, here you are, princess. Please, don't you think you should be going to bed soon, your royal highness? Staying up so late can surely do you no good. It's all right. If I should fall ill, if that sh were to happen, then perhaps I could avoid becoming the last ember in this dying war. <sighs> in this dying flame that we call liberal. Please do not speak of such things. Your Highness, you are the most exalted individual in liberal. If you were to take a husband, you could take control of the kingdom. I will not marry. Despite my father's wishes, I shall not consent to it. But why, your highness? You have two fine men as suitors, after all. One is Sir J Julius, of the Ch of the chivalric order of the Imperial Guards, and the eldest son of a duke. And the other, Sir Oscar. Commoner though he may be, he's been recognized often in his battles against the Empire. <sighs> Both such fun men. No one knows better than I the qualifications of their characters. 
Oh, Oscar. Oh, Julius. How am I to choose between you? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> the two me. <laughs> That's what we call professional uh, criticism. Do you remember, Oscar? How we spent our boyhood days in the alley, running about and pretending our sticks were swords. I can never forget, Julius. In those days, it was all so simple, with you and with Cecilia like. I treasure that time greatly. Haha! -ha! I recall how stunned I was. I would always conspire to play with her in secret, only to discover another had been doing the same. She was as lovely as the sight of the fallen petals in spring. Probably the Sakura in spring. Um, well, it's more petals than that. Uh, indeed, fair Cecilia was like unto our very own son. But her light would dim with each pa day that passed. The nobles and the commoners? The fury of that conflict could never have been avoided. The princess's grief was easily understandable. Cruel fate mocks us so. For it is our very existence that has brought her such sorrow. There's nothing wrong with that club. It is fantastic. Know this, Julius. The commoner's impudence can be tolerated no longer. If they should forget their place, and no longer view us as their superiors, the liberal's power structure would surely fall into ruin. If I may, Father, it has been roughly ten years since the Eastern Republic was founded. Perhaps the eventual seizing of power by the common people is inevitable in any state. Speak not of such repulsive events! What is freedom? What is equality? What is anything if commoners and nobles alike should cast all tradition aside? Better we should fall to our knees before the Empire's armies and concede to their will. Father... He's drunk. Oh boy. And he sympathizes with the with the Oh boy. Oh boy. Oscar, I'm expecting great things from you. If you can get the royal family on our side, we will have a great advantage over the nobles. And that advantage would allow us to seize power. But, Chairman, I cannot consent to this. I could never use Cecilia for political gain. Always putting others before ourselves, I see. Yourself. Even though you now have the chance to become a king, albeit only on paper. Strictly speaking, it would be uh, Prince Consort, but uh... If you would refuse, it will lead only to a bloody uprising and subsequent revolution. The royal family, and surely the nobles as well, 
would disappear into the shadows of history. Chairman! I do not wish bloodshed on anyone, revolution or no. I simply cannot allow Julius and Cecilia to die. As for myself, I know not what I should do. Uh, no good. I'm gonna be sick. Not on the stage! Are you alright? You must have had quite a bit more than you can handle. It may be spring, but you'll surely catch your death if you sleep out here. Thank you, good sir knight. It has nothing to do with being a knight, but rather simple concern. I would have to be quite the end fool to not see what I must do. You've got that right. Oh no! Just a touch of an anesthetic on the blade. Now, if you'll be so kind as to sit still. Curse you, assassin! Who sent you? Just a noble who wants you out of the picture. He wanted it badly enough to pay me up front, and pretty well at that. All you need to do is die. Long has it been since you have entered my sight, fair princess. Yes, Julius, it truly has. I cannot help but notice that Oscar is not with you today. Back when my father yet breathed, both of you were oft spoken of by the maids of the court. As you well know, your highness, the kingdom is in the midst of a crisis most dire. As such, he and I may never be as close as once we were. I confess, I come to you today to ask a favor of you. What favor would that be? That you would allow he and I, head of the Chivalric Order of the High Guard, and a young general, to engage in a duel of honor and that the victor shall be granted the great honor of becoming your husband. And that's more than just a favor. <laughs> Caught in the conflict between noble and commoner, these two close friends have finally decided on a duel. The princess now realizes their determination and kept silent. And on the day of the duel, two knights step into the grand arena of the royal city. Many have come to witness it, commoner, noble, and all social castes in between. But comes Furiously absent from the proceedings is the one over whom they fight, Princess Cecilia herself. My friend, I fear this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak, that we may both be unburdened if nothing else, for our beloved princess. I would cleave a path through fate with our own hands. We would. <clears throat> but at this moment, my words and her smiles both seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, Oscar? Perhaps. But what is the passion that pierces me to the quick? As I see you with blade drawn, 
I feel as though I've been waiting for this moment. Before the storm by the name of revolution should claim us both, we shall let fate decide our outcome. Yes, and may the goddess above see our spirits as they truly are. Come then, let it be done. And guard! Impressive, Julius. I should say the same of you. But still, you seem to hesitate! What troubles you, Oscar? Is this the extent of your skill? Perhaps the tales of your acts of valor against the Empire were grossly overstated. Ha! Well done, Julius. Magnificent swordsmanship. Oh, the wound from the assassin. I've had worse. Tis but a scratch. Neither of our blades connected with flesh. Not even a glancing blow. Your wound was struck prior. This is a tactic most low, Duke Raymond. Was this your intention from the start? I'll thank you to cease slandering my good name. Are you implying that I instigated this? Father, is it true? Did you? It's all right, Julius. My own inexperience has brought this about. And I've received far worse on the field of battle. I will put everything I have behind my next strike. I intend... I intend to kill you. Oscar. Very well. I'll wager it all on one final clash of swords. For the fair princess and the future of this very kingdom. He who lives when all is said and done will inherit the responsibility for all. And he who dies will watch over it all from the realm of the spirits. Such is also the pride of a knight. I suppose it is. Princess Cecilia, why were you not in attendance? Oh, Oscar, Julius, I did not wish to observe a duel between the two of you. I felt I had to find a way to put a stop to this fight. Please, adios, that I arrived when I did. Hear me, all who are here. Dismiss me, and set aside your differences, please. Are we not all of liberal? And do we not all love this land? There is so little that separates us from one another. If you would but take your foe's hand, surely we could find a peaceful resolution. My vision fades. But what of you two? Will you not do as I ask? Your will will be done, my princess. At your side. Strange. Everything is floating. When I was young, I would sneak out of the castle, down to the alley. Oscar, Julius, 
You both always had smiles for me. I love your smiles. So please, don't ever stop. Princess? This, this cannot be. I'll do anything! Please, no! Cecilia. Compared to that sacrifice, what a trifle is the pride of a nobleman. Had we not been fighting, we would never have come to this. Only now, when it is too late, do I see our folly. Is this the fate of all men, with their spirits still shackled to their flesh? Idios, great goddess of the skies, we now know of your great resentment. There is much that you do not yet understand, it seems. I granted you flesh to be your vessel, but your spirits still know more freedom and nobility. Such contempt for it lies only with you, yourselves. The goddess. Incredible. Hear me, young knights. I have observed your contest. You are both courageous and strong, yet something vital within you is broken. It's as you say. Our own immaturity is what invited this fate upon us. Chairman, has your ha hate of the nobles and the monarchy blinded you to the fact that we are all but men? That you are all but men. Duke, you know your sins better than anyone else here. And you, all the rest of you, who have simply watched these events unfold. There is something wrong within you that is lost as well. Strike your hand upon your breast and think well upon this. And it now seems that you have each remembered your hearts. As such, perhaps yet there remains hope for a liberal. So long as you never forget the lessons learned this day. Princess? Cecilia? Oh, oh my. Julius. Oscar. Have you both been called up to heaven as well? <laughs> it's... <laughs> Princess! Oh, praise adios. What? Why are the two of you... And the duke and the chairman? Am... Am I not dead? Almighty Atios. She has given liberal back its beloved. Praise her for her benevolence. Praise her. Oscar. Julius. Uh... What happened? Nothing that you need concern yourself over, sweet Celestia. The conflict is at an end. I believe everything will be all right now. You're being naive, Oscar. We still have a duel to finish, do we not? Julius. No, you still intend to fight? 
On the contrary, this match is concluded. And besides, this fool managed to get hit on his sword arm. But it would not do for a duel such as this to not have a clear victor. Thus it stands to reason that the man who fought with a handicap, yet emerged undefeated, should be regarded as the victor. Wait, Julius! Don't underestimate me, Oscar. I have not given up on the princess. Once you are healed, our duel will continue. But with blades of wood, I think. Just as when we were boys. Very well then. I accept your challenge. Have neither of you any regard for my own wishes? Y you are mistaken. You, my lady, shall judge today's match. And I think it only fair for the victor to be granted a kiss. Surely everyone waits with bated breath. Very well. <laughs> Almighty Adios, look well upon this! And may this fine day extend unto eternity. Eternal peace to liberal! Eternal glory to liberal. A little, uh, a little, a little heavy on la, that lap. The silver haired man. Who are you? <laughs> but no matter. Who is he? And so. The curtain fell on the margital of the White Magnolia to grand fanfare and acclaim. And with its conclusion, an announcement went out that the campus festival had reached its end. The crowd began to disperse and leave the campus, each person wearing a look of contentment. Brilliant, just brilliant. That was one fine play, if the director's allowed to say so. At first, I thought people would make fun of us with the rules switch like that. I'm so glad they took it seriously. Agreed, the costumes worked out pretty well. I wouldn't want to have to wear mine again, though. Corsets are some form of torture. Just wait till you see how many pictures the photographic glove took. Photographs? I'm just gonna go away. Don't worry if there's a sudden, uh, if there's a small fire in the student union building. I'm sure it's it'll be nothing. <clears throat> I can never win. That is what Joshua is saying to himself. The ones of Estelle and Chloe won't exactly drive people away either. Yeah, those outfits were great. Yeah, I don't know about that. Mm. Hmm. What's wrong, Estelle? Huh? What? Where? What are you talking about? Nothing important, really. We've been spacing out ever since the play finished. Are you okay? Well, that fight scene was pretty hard work. It's not surprise. It's no surprise that you're tired. Do you feel sick? We can take you to the nurse's office. I'm fine, really. I deal with fatigue every day as a bracer. I'm just trying to get my head back in order, is all. No, it's nothing like that. Ah, I promise, I'm perfectly all right. I choose to interpret this as Estelle having seen the silver-haired man in the audience. 
That is definitely why her head is in a kerfuffle. Miss Chloe, Oscar was so cool. I want to be that cool when I grow up. You were really great too, Estelle. Ah, Mr. Julius. Hey now, Mary. Joshua was so cute. It was great fun for us all. They play about love and friendship buffeted by the winds of a t tumultuous era. That's hard to say. It was so moving. It was a little verbose, TBH, but... Uh, <laughs> the fight scene was intense, and though one could only expect it to end in such tragedy, it had such a heartwarming conclusion. I thought it was splendid. With praise like that, I'd have to say it was worth the effort. Oh yeah, Hans? Right, I almost forgot. Oh, it's nothing bad, don't you worry. I'll be right back, so just keep doing what you're doing. Yep. I see. I must thank them then. The children will have many fond memories of Ruin. Matron. I've been up my mind. I will tell them my decision when we return to Minoria. I say while t literally talking over their heads because I'm because they're just little kids. They can't comprehend complex thoughts like a simple evasion. Like, come on, really? Come on! You're bet. You should be better than this. Maybe not Estelle, but you should be better than this matron. <laughs> hey, what you talking about? I actually really don't like this sort of dynamic. Uh, anyway. It's okay, Mary, but I think we should probably return to the inn. We can have dinner and continue our discussion over there. Okay? Now then, Chloe, and you too, Estelle and Joshua. I'm afraid we'll be taking our leave. Thank you for today. It was a lovely play. Hold on a sec. Jill's coming back any moment, and she'll probably want to say goodbye before you go. Pardon me. Oh, Dean Collins. It's a pleasure to see you again, Matron Clarissa. I must apologize for not coming by earlier. Do thank you for taking the time to visit. You needn't thank me. The festival was magnificent. I'm grateful for the invitation. The students were magnificent, weren't they? Chloe told me of your current situation. Truly dreadful. I was trying to think of a way that we could help. Jill. Yes, sir. Please, take this. We took up a collection for you. It's one million Mira. <laughs> one million?! Please use it to help rebuild the orphanage. This really is a school for rich people. Oi. <laughs> Well, we have the Duke, as well as the Mayor of Bose, so there are some celebrities here. Thanks to them, we were able to collect far more than we would have otherwise. I cannot accept this. 
The festival collection collects donations for a charity every year. People donated specifically to help rebuild the orphanage. But I... It's too much. Please accept it, matron. But Chloe... I realize that you're overwhelmed. But think about it, please. With that much Mira, the rebuilding could start, and you wouldn't even need to go to Grenzel. You wouldn't have to give up on your herb garden. She speaks the truth. Joseph would want to accept this. Would want you to accept this. For the children. You needn't focus on the amount. Just what can be done with it. You're right. I... I, I, I don't know how to show my appreciation. Th thank you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. That should settle that. I guess that was their big surprise. It's okay. There's no need to worry. You've all been through so much. Don't be silly, Clem. Those are happy tears. After the matron and the children left to return to Menoria, Estelle and Joshua joined the other students in cleaning up after the festival. By the time everything was done, the day had given way to evening. And now they're kicking us out. At night time. Couldn't let us stay, like, literally one more night, leave in the morning. No. Um. <laughs> but we had everything set up for you to be able to stay. Oh, actually, they did set up for us to stay the night. Okay, I take it back. <laughs> I mean, the festival just ended and everything. Sorry, but we can't. Since we're still apprentices, we can't go too long without checking in at the guild. We'd like to give our report before the day's out, if we can. So, you'll have to excuse us. Is that so? Oh well. Guess I'm on my own tonight. It sure is gonna be lonely and Hands. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, but you said that about o Olivia as well, didn't you, Joshua? Didn't you? I could stand to hear more. It's never boring with you guys, I'll give you that much. I hope we get a chance to come see us again. And stay for a couple days. And nights. Winks at Joshua. We'll stop in again soon. Well, let's get going. We'll lose the daylight if we don't hurry. So, you're coming with, Chloe? Oh. Okay, that makes sense. Hmm. Isn't it kind of risky for them to be carrying around that much money? Oh, don't worry about that. One of the other bracers escorted the whole lot of them back to the village. Her name's Karna. Apparently, the dean made a special request. Well, stay healthy, you guys. Here's hoping you will do great with your bracer studies. Yep, you can count on it. Best of luck to both of you as well. We only had a few days at the academy, but it was great fun. Well, other than class anyway. What are you talking about, Estelle? Normal students spend most of their time attending classes. The school festival might have been fun, but it was just a special event. Yeah, you're right. Being a student is tougher than I thought. Yeah, that's Estelle, right? <laughs> Nothing. 
I just can't seem to send Sig nearby. I wonder where he went. That must be it. I'm sorry, I'm just being silly. Please allow me to come with you as far as the coastal road. Sure, it'll be fun. I mean, I see no reason to fight anything on this road, so <laughs> we're just gonna run for it. Wait a second. I've had a thought. Let's see if this works. Maybe it won't. I made it back in. The operation is go. Uh, let's see. What time is it actually? Everything seems quite empty though. Hmm. That's a little odd. Oh, they're all literally they're all in here. Okay, well, you know, we'll we'll come back to that one in a moment. <laughs> ah! Almost missed out on some sweet dialogue. I was kind of hoping I'd get a book, though. I'm certain that one of the students in here has one of the volumes of uh, Carnelia. And I seem to have missed it, because I don't have it. But, you know, if so, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> it is not. Oh, wait. It actually bothers me, like, way more than it should that we never saw anyone here. I want to see what you, you're selling in the shop! I want to buy stuff from the student shop. I don't care if it's not stuff I need. Give me, like, stationery or something. Do it! Okay, well... Wait, what was that? Hmm... Did he just say something about inviting us to a school? Joshua, at least. I don't think Estelle is an especially good student. Though she is cer certainly good to have around for other things. Like, I, d like, I don't think that should reflect poorly upon her. It's just not really her ex area of expertise, being a student. Okay, well, everyone is in here. Yep, that's, that's laggy. <laughs> Too many sprites! I'm just glad that everything concluded without incident. Hmm. <laughs> ah, that's lovely. Probably. Yeah, I bet that's him on the stairs. Oh no, he's right here. Man, I'm beat. Can't wait to get home and sleep. I wonder if it's okay to take a break from studying for the day. Why are they all in the 
gym, though. The auditorium, at, actually, but... I mean, I look at this space and I instantly think gym. <laughs> the launch? What are they launching? Wait a second. Launch parties. I thought I heard a pun. It was enjoyable because it only happens once a year and everyone puts so much work into it. If we tried to keep up that pace throughout the year, we'd all get seriously burnt out. Wow. Just wow. Okay, well, I guess they're having a party then. Like a post-festival party. That's interesting. Now, let's head down the path. Actually, let's save. There's a reason I'm doing this now. And now we're gonna head down the path. I have a suspicion of what is soon about to happen. Um. Yeah, that about sums it up. Wait. Super Shadow! I guess this is goodbye for now. Yes. Thank you so much for the last few days. No problem. It's been fun. Take care, and say hi to Matron Teresa and the kids for us. Don't worry, I will. Hey, you three! You guys are bracers, right? We've got big trouble! Please! Uh, hang on a sec, I have to catch my breath. Uh, oh. Someone attack Matron Theresa and the kids near Minoria! Who is doing this to them? That's probably where Sieg is. Ooh, I'm sorry. Please tell us whatever you can. Oh, okay. They were apparently assaulted by some strange group on the way back from the campus festival. The kids are okay, but Matron Teresa and the Bracy Lady got knocked out. I would have contacted the guild, but communications are down at the end. I didn't have any other choice but to run all the way here. Will do. Okay, so... I mean... I'm pretty sure it won't let me go into Ruan, but... It let me go into the Ruan. <laughs> now I have to actually go around and talk to people. <laughs> Q. 
you know, I think I'm gonna stop off here for the night. <laughs> Next time we'll do the distraction from the from the time pressing trials before us. And then also do those time pressing trials, maybe. But not this time. This time I feel like I'm done for the night. So uh, thanks for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed. And have a great evening, morning, afternoon, night, or etc. Goodbye!